One, in this video, I want to review a few different things that come up in probability and statistics. I want to talk about the two-way table, also known as a two-by-two two table, or contingency table. This is going to be a very simple one, but hopefully it will get the point across. Okay. From that, or as part of seeing what these things are all about, we're also going to refresh what a joint distribution is, a joint PDF, if you will, or PMF, because this is going to be the, a discrete case. Uh, joint distribution, marginal distribution, conditional distribution, and then hopefully we will see how we can make a Bayesian inference once we are armed with all of these tools. Okay, so we're going to do this very, very simple uh, scenario where we have a population of 100 people. And for those 100 people, we're going to, we're, we care about two variables here, their gender and whether or not they admit to smoking. Okay. So we're going to, just for simplicity, because I'll be referring to these by variable name later, our x variable is going to be gender, and there's, for our purposes, two outcomes, boy and girl. And the y variable is whether or not they are a smoker, and so they could either, yes, be a smoker, or they could be a non-smoker. Okay, so we've got these hundred people, and we collect our, our population data here. And what we find is that of the people in the 100-person population, um, there are, let's go with 50 boys who are smokers. There's 10 boys who are non-smokers. There's 10 girls who are smokers. And there are 30 girls who are non smokers. So as you can see, these numbers are designed to sort of work out and make things easy to see. Um, okay, so this is our, our population, and from this we might want to ask, if we just select a person at random from our population, what is the probability of them being in any one of these cells, if you will, of the two-way table? Okay, well that's super easy. We would just divide each count by the total number of people. We know the total number of people is 100. Uh, so we can get a table of proportions, these are counts, but we could make a table of proportions so that we can make these probability statements. Okay, so what would we get? Smokers, non-smokers, okay. We would get 0 0.1, 0 0.3, 0 0.5, and 0 0.1. Okay, so the information in this table is the joint distribution of x and y. Okay, very well. Uh, we could have asked, if we sampled our person at random, we could have asked just if they were a boy or a girl, what would the probabilities be? Or are they a smoker or a non-smoker, given, like, without considering their gender? And so how do you get those? Well, it's super easy. You would just, you just total up along the rows and columns. So in this way, we're just going to actually sort of append this with another uh, row and column to get the totals which is going to be the marginal distribution of these variables. Okay, so over here, the total probability of being a girl would just be the sum over both smokers and non-smokers of being a girl, which would be 0.4. The probability of being a boy, likewise, would be a 0.6. The probability of being a smoker is a 0.6, and the probability of being a non-smoker is 0.4. So that takes care of our marginal distributions. Okay, the concept of the conditional distribution. This is all about the probability of being, say, a boy 
given that they smoke, or the probability of a boy given that they don't smoke, or the probability of being a girl given that they smoke, probability of being a girl given that they don't smoke, and then there's the other set of them, the probability of smoking given that it's a girl, yada yada yada. Um, okay, so how do we go about calculating these? Let's take the case of, we're asking about the probability of x given y. Okay, so the probability, so for as an example, the probability of being a boy given that the person is a smoker. So the way that you do this is you go, you go into the joint distribution here and you see that it's like 0.5, right? But we need to take into account the other ways that you could be a smoker other than being a boy, namely being a girl. So you would need to sum up this guy. But the sum of this guy, as we can see, is just the marginal distribution of being a smoker. Anyway, to put it into numbers here, we would get 0.5 divided by 0.6. Ah, so this tells us that if we randomly select someone and you tell me that they're a smoker, that means that there's a good chance, that a very good chance here that, they're, that they were a boy as opposed to being a girl. And this is called the posterior uh, probability of a random variable given or conditional on some other outcome. Okay, so symbolically then, all we would do to answer this is we would just take the probability of x and y and we would divide by the probability of y. And this follows from what we just did here. Okay, so I only calculated one of these for you, but you could imagine just generally the distribution of being the distribution of gender, given that you're a smoker, would just be like you could make a table of the outcomes and the probabilities and you could form like nice probability distributions for, for each of these uh, conditional um, situations. Okay, so where does this get good? Well, the, the magic of it happens if we look up here, because what we can see is that we can multiply both sides of this equation by the probability of y to get something like the probability of x given y times the probability of y is equal to the probability of x and y. Hmm. Okay, the great thing about the probability of x and y is that it doesn't matter what we write first. The probability of x and y is the same as the probability of y and x. There's symmetry there. So this enables us to write or to write um, equivalently the probability of y given x times the probability of x, okay? So we took our, what we had before, which was conditional being equal to joint over marginal. We swung the marginal over, and then we said conditional times marginal is actually equal to the other conditional times the other marginal. And this lies at the heart of Bayesian inference because it allows us to calculate the posterior distribution given something. Um, so let's contextualize this in our problem here. Suppose we pick a person at random. Ultimately, we want to know whether or not they are a smoker. Okay. So... If we don't know anything about the person that we've selected, the best we can do is go to our marginal and say, okay, well, the chance that they're a smoker is 0.6 and the chance that they're not is 0.4. But we can do better than that if we give ourselves some more information. So suppose we pick a person and note that it is a boy. Okay, now what is the probability that they're a smoker? So what is the probability of being a smoker given that we've selected a boy. Well, this is going to be equal to the probability that they're a boy, given that they smoke, times the total probability of smoking, divided by the total probability of being a boy,
And this is equal to the probability of being a boy given that you smoke is 5 sixths times the probability of smoking total the probability of being a boy total okay these cancel and we're left with 5 sixths okay so you might be saying well this was ridiculous why did you why did you do this like, you got the same answer here, consulting the table in sort of a similar way. But what you need to see is that in this example, we needed to have the full-blown conditional, uh, sorry, the full-blown joint distribution in order to, in order to compute this. Um, in Bayesian statistics, you don't need the joint distribution. You work around it by just using the conditionals and the marginals. Um, so hopefully in the near future I'll be able to produce a video where I show that that is, is the case a bit more convincingly. So thank you for your patience everybody.